Hydrocephalus is a neurological condition that is characterized by an abnormal buildup of cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF, in the brain. Hydrocephalus is almost always a lifelong condition that has no cure and whose current treatment, a shunt, often comes with its own ongoing problems, such as shunt failure or infection. Many kids require repeated surgeries just to survive. As well, kids can face many of the other difficulties associated with hydrocephalus, such as frequent headaches, cerebral palsy, seizures, and learning challenges. Fact, one million people have hydrocephalus in the United States. Fact, there is no cure and very little research. Consider that while about the same number of children are diagnosed with juvenile diabetes as hydrocephalus, the National Institute of Health funds $300 per person with juvenile diabetes per year, but only 60 cents per person with hydrocephalus per year. Fact, the current standard treatment, a shunt, has a 50% failure rate after just two years. Fact, 60% of children with hydrocephalus are not independent as adults and require assistance. Fact, 50% of children with hydrocephalus score 80 or below on standardized intelligence tests. Fact, it costs the United States $1 billion per year in healthcare costs to treat hydrocephalus. These children know in their daily lives, in and out of the hospital, that these facts are real and know how much of an impact new research and better funding could make in their lives. My son Christian acquired hydrocephalus due to a car accident he was in when he was one year old. Christian lost his birth parents in the accident and spent the following four months in the hospital. Even though Christian has made tremendous gains since then, even surpassing all the doctor's expectations, hydrocephalus will be a lifelong challenge for Christian. Christian is eight years old, but has had over 10 brain surgeries since acquiring hydrocephalus. Early on, doctors placed a shunt in Christian's head since his body had lost its natural ability to drain brain fluid. Shunts are like a ticking time bomb in that they can be fine for long periods of time and then out of the blue stop working and they need to be replaced. Christian has had his shunt replaced several times. He currently has a shunt that can be magnetically adjusted so that surgery is not as often required. One of Christian's most difficult shunt experiences was having it become infected. He spent two weeks in Seattle Children's Hospital. His shunt was externalized and Christian was put on antibiotics. But the worst part of the experience was that he had to keep his head immobile the whole two weeks so that the externalized shunt would drain properly. Even with all the difficulty, Christian continues to do well. He's eight years old and in the second grade. He has a very contagious smile and brings joy to those around him. Some of his favorite activities are playing Xbox, squirting the hose in the back of the yard, and playing with his little sister, Elena, who is two. Christian has a gift for music and has taught himself to play several tunes on the piano. Christian keeps us, his parents, very busy. Because of his traumatic brain injury, Christian has learning delays and physical delays. Every week, mom takes him to physical, occupational, and speech therapy, therapeutic aquatic lessons, and therapeutic horse riding. Sometimes it can be very hard for us to know if something is going wrong with a shunt. For most kids, if they throw up, their parents might watch for flu symptoms. But for Christian, it usually means a trip to the hospital to get examined by the neurosurgeons. Sometimes it does end up being something like the flu, but other times it has been a failure with a shunt. Even when the problem is with his shunt, it can be very difficult to tell at the beginning. Quite often, we end up staying at the hospital for a day or two, with Christian undergoing various tests that are usually inconclusive and waiting for his condition to make a definitive turn for the worse or better. Sometimes the day after coming home from the hospital is when we feel the most drained. It takes a day or two just to recover our energy reserves. And that's just the times when he hasn't needed surgery. We're looking forward to the possibility that research into hydrocephalus might improve the daily lives of those who live with the condition. We're excited about the new research going on at Children's Hospital, and we're glad we can help in the effort to make a positive change in this life-threatening condition. Spread your wings, spread your wings, spread your wings, and fly, fly. The Hydrocephalus Research Guild was started to help kids like Christian and to raise financial support for research into hydrocephalus. 
The research, for instance, that Seattle Children's Hospital pediatric neurosurgeon Dr. Anthony Avellino is doing will help find better treatment for children with hydrocephalus. Research may discover that kids could be treated without shunts, which would mean kids wouldn't need multiple brain surgeries to survive. Because of your support, our children and children all over the world will have an improved chance of normal neurological and cognitive development, and an improved chance of living a life without multiple brain surgeries. Come.